What are you doing here? <laughs> Hi guys, how's it going? My name's Helena and I'm back with Kielder Observatory. This is the last video in the trio of videos I'm doing in this beginner stargazing series. In the previous two videos we covered how to get into stargazing, what you needed to get into it and also a one up from that in case you wanted to buy your own telescope and look at these objects further. What better way to finish off this series by actually coming out under the night sky and showing you all the principles that I was talking about and putting them into practice from the previous videos. This video is going to be a total mishmash of information that I've included in the last two clips as well as newer information in this one to compile five essential items that I think you would benefit from to enjoy a night of stargazing. I myself am an astrophotographer so I take photos of the objects that I'm talking about in these videos and I so happen to be out with my telescope tonight for a deep sky imaging run and I thought I'd take you on the journey with me to show you at what point I use each essential item on the list. This is to show you how broad the list is and how adaptable it is to each different situation as I could use them for astrophotography but I could also use them for observational astronomy, visual astronomy or just a chilled night out of stargazing. You'll have noticed at this point in the video that it's quite dark and aptly so to move into the first suggestion that I have on the essentials list and that is a red head torch. One of the most frequently asked questions astronomers and astrophotographers get is why we use red light instead of white light to see where we're going when we're under the night sky. The reason is very simple and very linked to the factor of light pollution that I was talking about in the first video Beginner's Guide to Stargazing. We don't want to be creating any excess light pollution when we're out under the sky. White light that's emitted from any old torch, lantern, headlamp that you can purchase damages your so-called night vision. And this basically refers to the amount of time it takes for your eyes to adjust to the night sky when you get outside. So let's put this into a scenario. So say we're under a really dark sky and you blind yourself with a white light. If you look up straight after looking into the white light, you're gonna see less stars than before. And this is because you've ruined your night vision and your eyes are gonna have to take that time to adjust to the darkness again. You'll have noticed while I'm filming this segment that the sky is getting darker and darker and I'm sort of slipping into the shadows a little bit, but that's totally fine. You'll also notice that I'm not using any extra film lights around me to illuminate my face like I would do in normal circumstances. This is purely because I want to let my eyes adjust before darkness falls and I want to be able to make sure that I can see the maximum number of stars in the sky tonight. The second item on the essential stargazing list that I cannot live without is a mobile version of a star chart. Now different star charts come under many different names from many different companies but my favourites are Skyview and Stellarium. I spoke a lot about Skyview during the beginner's guide to stargazing video in this series but in case you missed that or missed that part of the video Skyview basically shows you the stars in relation to your location and where you are. It literally shows you a live view of your surroundings and where the stars are going to be in relation to that. So this is really useful for me in a sense for astrophotography as I can see which stars rise and set at which times and which objects are going to be obstructed by trees, my neighbours houses, the hills etc. By using Skyview tonight really quickly I was able to discover that the object I want to photograph tonight really easily clears these trees above me which is ideal and it means that I don't have to move my equipment around. Taking this slightly away from astrophotography and back to stargazing again you can use Skyview to find objects in the night sky if you're not familiar with the constellations or the star shapes or where the planets rise and set. You can simply type them in the search bar and the arrow will take you to them as you move. This is an ideal way to learn your way around the night sky and one that I highly recommend for beginners wanting to get into this hobby. So we've got a really bright star above this tree here. It's just starting to get dark. It's not quite past twilight yet but I'd like to know what the star is above this tree. It is as simple as coming into sky view and you won't be able to see my surroundings through my phone here, but sky view has shown me my surroundings 
where the trees are in relation to the stars. And what I want to do is tilt my phone up and find the tip of that tree that that star was above and we should be able to see a bright star come into the view of sky view. So I'm going to do exactly that. I'm going to tilt my phone up until the first star appears. It's at the tip of that tree. Tap on it and it highlights it as Altair. The dotted line on the right hand side shows the path that it's going to take throughout the night and the solid line on the left hand side shows the path that it's already taken to get to the point that it's at now. We've now put the redhead torch and sky view into practice. The third thing on the list of essentials for stargazing, in my opinion, is a laser pointer. A laser pointer is what it says on the tin. It's a green laser that you can use to point at different objects in the night sky. It's perfect for beginners as you can use this to draw out different shapes in the constellations and point to different points of interest in the sky to share it with family and friends. I use the laser pointer in this instance to point to the North Star, which is called Polaris, as my mount needs to be aligned to this in order to know where every object is in the night sky. This is because Polaris points to Earth's axis of rotation and all other stars rotate around this star. Let's put what I've just said about laser pointers into practice. So, using sky view, I've been able to locate the location of the North Star, Polaris. And using my laser pointer, I can show you where that is now. Polaris is this star in the sky. And you would think that the North Star was actually the brightest star in the night sky, but it's not and it can easily blend in with all the others so it can be quite a difficult one to locate sometimes. The easiest way to find the North Star if you're looking to find it under a dark night sky is go from this constellation over here which is a very popular constellation called the Plough. You can see that the Plough is made up of these four main stars here and this sort of handle of stars here and you want to go to the two stars right at the end of the pan if you like of the plough and go straight diagonally up and this will always lead you to the north star this is another really famous constellation in the night sky and you can see that it sort of makes the shape of a w this constellation is called cassiopeia and you can identify it by its distinct W shape. The fourth item on the essential stargazers list is something that's more important to have during the winter months. Just now in summer in Scotland, it's 15 degrees out tonight, which is really doable. But most of the time here in the UK, it is freezing, freezing weather to go out stargazing and you're going to want some of these. <laughs> Not just gloves though, thermals in general are essential for enjoying a night of stargazing as feeling the cold and feeling uncomfortable can completely ruin your night. Important items such as thermal underclothes like leggings and a long sleeve top, thermal gloves, a thermal jacket and some heat pads are essential. Even putting heat pads in something like your sock or your shoe or up your sleeve to keep those joints warm and moving can be an absolute game changer. We've gone over lighting, comfort such as thermal clothing, how to point out certain constellations in the night sky and how to learn your wear in the night sky as four physical essential things to put on the essential stargazers list. The fifth thing on the list is not a physical thing, it's a mental thing. And it's to remember that no matter what happens, to have fun. <laughs> it can be frustrating and also really easy to get caught up in the technologies that are involved in finding objects in the night sky. And it can be frustrating if you don't know what you're looking at. But just know that sometimes that's okay. As long as you're outside having fun and enjoying the hobby, 
that's all that matters. Learning your way around the night sky is something that's going to come with practice and not something that's going to come with a click of the finger and the more you do it and the more you go out and enjoy yourself the more you'll find you'll learn. I thought I'd end this video by saying how I have fun under the night sky. I have fun under the night sky by taking photos of deep sky objects. Just tonight I've been photographing an object in the Cygnus region of the night sky which I'll leave here at the end of today's video. Why do I like taking photos? To share them with people. To share them with people like you guys and put a smile on everyone's faces. It is an amazing feeling when you're showing someone something in the night sky for the first time and they've never seen it before, especially things like the planets or the moon and you can see the excitement and the adrenaline running through their face. It's a feeling like no other and that is why I do what I do. And with that all being said, thank you guys so much for tuning in to the last episode in this Stargazing for Beginners series. I really hope you've got something out of it and I really hope especially seeing me out on the field here today has inspired you to get out and enjoy the night sky and get interested in astronomy. I hope to see you back here on Kilder's YouTube channel very soon. But until then, my name's been Helena. This has been a beginner's guide to stargazing. Happy stargazing and clear skies. Thank you.